It was a nice day. The sun was out and the air was crisp. This was perfect for Chibiko, as he had decided that today he would go hiking in the mountains near his house. He ate a healthy breakfast of different fruits, and then packed his bag, making sure to include a few snacks for energy, as well as a bottle of water, as it was important not to get too thirsty when you go hiking. Then he slept on some sunscreen, went outside and rode the bus to the foot of the nearest mountain. It was much bigger than he had expected up close. This hike might take all day. Well, no time to waste then, Chibiko thought. And so he started to walk up the mountain path. Soon he was sweating, even though the weather wasn't hot. Wow, hiking can be tough! Luckily, the higher he got, the more trees there were, so he could keep out of the sun. But then suddenly, he ran into a tree snake. Hiss! Oh no, um, I, I have a, a, a chocolate bar, Chibiko said as he pulled the treat from his backpack. The snake looked at the chocolate bar, sniffed it, and then smiled. Whew, safe. Chibiko continued to hike up the mountain. But a few minutes later, he bumped into into a bear. Growl. Oh no, um, I, I, I have a, I, I have, I, I have this tuna sandwich, Chibiko said as he pulled his lunch out from his backpack. The bear looked at the sandwich and examined it closely. It smiled. Whew, safe again. Chibiko continued to hike up the mountain path. A couple of scares aside, it had been quite a pleasant day, and Chibiko was sure that he was getting some good exercise, as well as some nice fresh air. Suddenly, a gorilla appeared in front of him. It beat its chest. Thump! Thump, thump. Oh no, um, I, I have, I have a, a... Chibiko frantically searched the contents of his backpack. I have this box of animal crackers. The gorilla took the box and opened it. It looked very closely as it pulled out its first cracker. It was a monkey animal cracker. Oh no, the gorilla is very angry. Quick, run down the hill. Chibiko ran as fast as he could. Bye bear, bye snake. Ah! The gorilla was still behind him. Quick, to the bus stop, wait for the bus, get on the bus, pay your fare, ride the bus. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Chibiko checked the window before getting off the bus. Whew, safe. He thanked the driver, got off, went home and opened the fridge so that he could cool down with a nice glass of orange juice. Well, that was exciting, he thought to himself. I wonder if I should stay inside tomorrow. Chibiko came home with a large paper bag full of groceries. It was quite heavy, and he had had some trouble opening the front door. But he eventually got inside and went to the kitchen to unpack. This was the first time that he had been shopping in some time, and so he had bought a lot of food. 
He had milk and cheese, some bread, some pork and some chicken, a few snacks and some vegetables. He packed everything away. That's pretty lucky, he thought to himself as he put the last bag of candy in a cabinet. The bag was starting to tear open. A few more minutes and I might have lost everything. He then made himself a grilled cheese sandwich for dinner, brushed his teeth, and went to bed. Chibiko! A voice said. Chibiko groaned and turned his face into his pillow. Chibiko! The voice said again. Chibiko sat up and rubbed his eyes. Danny was in his bedroom. Chibiko really needed to get better about locking his door when he was home. You won't believe it! Danny's voice was almost shouting. Chibiko couldn't tell if his friend was excited or afraid. Believe what? Chibiko asked. Follow me! Danny said and then rushed out of the bedroom. Chibiko got up and followed his friend through the living room and to his front door. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was an enormous pumpkin in his front yard. I could hear it growing when I was trying to sleep last night, Danny said. Isn't it incredible? I wonder how it got here. Chibiko stood in thought. Jelly beans quite often appeared in his front yard. But a pumpkin, that was something new entirely. Just how did it get there? Oh, Chibiko said as he suddenly realized something. There was a small hole in my shopping bag yesterday. Maybe a small pumpkin or something fell out before I got inside? That makes sense, Danny said. Pumpkins can be kind of weird and magical at this time of year. I wonder what we should do with this one. It looks delicious. Chibiko wasn't really sure if pumpkins were magic at any time of the year. But it was true that there was a very big one in his front yard right now. I think it's a bit too big for us to eat it all, Chibiko began. What if we turn it into a swimming pool? Danny suggested. I, um, don't think so? Chibiko replied. What about a hot tub? Danny said. Wouldn't that basically be like taking a bath in pumpkin soup? Chibiko said. I guess so, Danny said. His voice sounded a little disappointed. Why don't we just decorate it, Chibiko said. In fact, your body might be the perfect shape to measure the eyes with. Danny seemed to like this idea, and so they set about using him to measure and cut out some eyes on the giant pumpkin. It was a lot of fun, but all of the measuring and cutting was very hard work and it was already starting to get dark by the time they were done. I don't think we have time to cut out a proper mouth, Chibiko said. It's getting late. Don't worry, Daddy beamed and quickly ran off to his treehouse. Chibiko was curious about what Danny was doing, but he didn't have to wait long. Danny returned with a box of crayons. I find it scary if we cut out a normal mouth, he said as he offered Chibiko a choice of color. Let's just draw one in our own style. And so, Chibiko and Danny worked together to create a very large and very unique Jack O'Lantern. It wasn't scary, but it wouldn't have mattered. They were both exhausted and had fallen asleep before they could even eat dinner and get to their beds.
One afternoon, Chibiko was looking out the window at his backyard and wondering what he could do. His backyard was a bit messy. Dirty, really, because there was a lot of dirt. But it didn't have many fun things in it. No swing set, no basketball hoop, no vegetable garden, nothing. He returned to his living room and looked at his TV, just in time to see a story about a dog that had dug a hole while looking for a bone that it had buried years ago. Instead of a bone though, it had found a nugget of gold. Apparently, it was worth a lot of money. Chibiko looked at the picture of the gold nugget in amazement. And then an idea hit him. He could look for gold in his own backyard. He had lots of space to dig in after all. And so, he dug around his old chest, chesty he called it, until he found a spade and went out into his backyard. If Chibiko's memory from watching pirate cartoons was correct, then if there was any treasure to be found, it would be buried beneath a big letter X, often red in color. Chibiko wandered around his backyard in search of a big red X, but he found nothing. After walking around three times, he found a patch in the grass that looked a bit like an X. It was his best lead, and so he got his spade and started digging. Dirt went everywhere. It got all over the grass, coloured his windows brown, and made Chibiko himself very... dirty. Even though he did a lot of digging, Chibiko had found no signs of gold. Perhaps there was gold buried in a different part of his yard. Chibiko's hole was quite deep though. He jumped once and fell back down. He jumped twice and fell down again. He jumped a third time and climbed and climbed and climbed and climbed until he got out. Phew! Clearly, looking for a big red X wasn't working. Chibiko went back inside, showered, and again dug around inside Chesty. Two minutes, 10 minutes, 37 minutes later, he pulled out a metal detector. Chibiko took his metal detector outside switched it on, and started walking around his yard, listening to the beeps. He checked one corner. Beep! 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 He checked the next corner. Beep! 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 He checked a third corner. He checked the final corner. Beep! 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 Nothing. Chibiko felt a bit sad. He walked back towards his back door, dragging the metal detector behind him. Beep! Chibiko jumped with excitement. His metal detector was beeping super fast. He ran, got his spade, and dug. He dug and dug and dug until he found 
an old box. That's strange, he thought to himself. I guess I should open it. Inside he found a photo of himself as a baby. Wow, he sat and stared at the photo. This must have been buried here years ago, waiting for him to find it. He had completely forgotten that it had been buried here. He felt very happy. He hadn't found any gold, but this treasure was still very good. He was glad that he had spent his afternoon digging up his backyard. Even if he had made a very big mess. Recently, Chibiko had been watching his favorite TV show. It was a show about ninja hot dogs, and in it the ninja hot dogs stopped crimes by hiding in trees, jumping really high, throwing spiky stars, and getting into sword fights. It was very exciting, and Chibiko often imagined himself as a new member of the Ninja Hot Dog Squad. Since blue was already taken, his outfit would be purple, and his special skill would be throwing blasts of wind with his sword. He would be excellent at hiding, and able to jump over entire buildings. One day, while looking out over his neighborhood, Ninja Chibiko saw some giant potatoes that were trying to steal all of the town's computers and televisions. Ninja Hot Dog Squad to action! One ninja hot dog that was good at running jumped to the left. Another ninja hot dog that could talk to animals went to the pet store to the right. A third ninja hot dog, one with special long-ranged vision, climbed as high as it could to watch the action and talked to the other squad members over the special wiener radio. Chibiko's job was to run forward so that he could keep the television thieves busy while the hot dog squad got ready to catch them and take them to jail. And so he charged forward. He ran super fast. And then there it was, the first giant potato. The potato tried to punch Chibiko, but Chibiko jumped over the potato and knocked it over with his sword. Chibiko heard the next potato coming before it even saw him, and he hid just in time. The potato looked very mean, but no matter how hard it looked, it couldn't see Chibiko. When it turned around, Chibiko appeared from his hiding spot and knocked the second potato over. With two potatoes already knocked down, he rushed around the corner where he caught a third potato by surprise and tripped it with his throwing star before it had a chance to even turn around. Chibiko was doing very well as the fourth member of the Ninja Hot Dog Squad. These potatoes had just been henchmen, however. There was still another, even meaner giant potato that was stealing all of the computers and televisions in town. Chibiko would have to find the boss potato. Suddenly, he got a wiener radio message from the third ninja hot dog. I've spotted the leader of the big potatoes. It's in the center of the city, loading televisions into a truck. Please race there and stop it. There was no time to wait. Chibiko turned towards the center of town 
and ran at super ninja speed. When he arrived, the first two members of the squad were in trouble. Chibiko suddenly felt very angry. He pulled out his sword and threw a blast of wind at the big boss potato. Yeah! He yelled. The blast missed and the potato boss smiled. But this only made Chibiko more fired up. He charged in, slashed with his sword and heard a smash. He opened his eyes. He had made quite a mess. There were scratches on the walls, cushions were all messed up, and it looked like he had broken his TV with a toilet brush while imagining himself charging at the big boss potato. Chibiko was a bit sad about breaking his TV, but the sight of his toilet brush sticking through it was so funny that he laughed and laughed for the rest of the day. One morning, after eating breakfast and brushing his teeth, Chibiko sat himself on his sofa with a plonk, picked up the remote control and pointed it at his television. Nothing happened. He pressed a few more buttons before he remembered that there was a hole in the front of his TV. It was broken, and he would have to wait until he bought a new one before he could watch Gumdrop Gumboots, Ninja Hot Dog Squad, News Grumps, or any other of his favorite shows. While he was wondering about what kind of new TV to buy, or if he could get this one fixed, Chibiko's phone rang and he answered it. Hello, this is Chibiko, he said. Hi Chibiko, it's Danny, his triangular friend answered. I was just wondering if you had anything that you were planning to do for today. Well, I was planning to watch some TV shows, Chibiko said, but... But what? Danny asked. My TV doesn't work. I broke it, Chibiko told him. Don't worry, Danny said, suddenly excited. I have an idea. What idea? Chibiko asked. Just wait and see. I'll be there in a couple of minutes, Danny said, and then hung up the phone. Whatever was Danny planning to do? Chibiko wondered. Soon, the doorbell rang. Ding dong! When Chibiko opened the door, he saw that Danny had bought with him a big cardboard box, a pair of scissors, sticky tape, lots of paper and different colored paints. We'll make our own TV show, Danny exclaimed, and they both went inside. They ate some pork adobo for lunch together, and then set about making everything that they would need to make their own television show. They spent the whole afternoon cutting and measuring and sticking and painting, until finally they were ready, just before sundown. Ready? Danny asked. Ready! Chibiko said. Good evening, people of Saturn. It's time for the daily news. Today was peaceful in the morning, but around lunchtime, some dinosaurs jumped over from the rings and started to eat all of the food in one family's fridge. Here's what one of them had to say. It was really scary. There were, there were so many of them, and they were very big. Thankfully, I was able to keep one pizza from them by hiding it under the sofa. It is believed that a Tyrannosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and Triceratops were the main fridge raiders. A Stegosaurus is believed to have hurt its leg after landing. It is now being treated at Saturn Central Hospital. In other news, the Great 
annual ice cream ring race is set to start tomorrow. This is a traditional race in which Martian wombats drive cars made out of ice cream around the rings of Saturn for three weeks. The wombat with the most laps at the end of this time will be the champion, which means that he or she gets to eat all of the ice cream cars. Last year's winner, Wemble, seen here looking very happy, is this year's favourite as well. Ding 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 ding! And that's all we have time for tonight. Remember people, stay safe and sleep well. You're a natural, Danny said. We should do this again one day. That might be fun, Chibiko thought as he saw Danny out before it got too dark, and then went to his room and put himself to bed. It can be fun to do things, instead of just watching them, sometimes. And then he went to sleep.